Ellensford Hotel today and they've kindly let us use their kitchen. We've got some absolutely fantastic dairy produce. Also, we've got some lovely lobsters and I'm gonna show you a classic dish, lobster mornay. Now, what I've done with these lobsters around about an hour ago is I just popped them into the freezer. It renders them senseless. So when we put them into the boiling water, they're not gonna feel anything. If we don't do that and we just put them in the water while they're alive, they'll stress and the meat becomes very, very tough. I put the lobsters into a large pot of salted boiling water, making sure they are completely submerged and leave them to cook for eight minutes. As a general rule, cook your lobsters one minute for every 100 grams. Now while they're boiling away, I'm gonna infuse my milk. We're gonna make something called a bechamel. I stood half an onion with some cloves, making sure to break off the ends. Then I add the studded onion to one litre of milk and turn the heat to low. Now it's important that you bring the milk up to the boil very slowly because the sugars in the milk can stick to the bottom, caramelise and burn. While that's coming up to temperature, let's check the lobster. My lobster's done now. It's been eight minutes. I'm going to take these guys out. And they look absolutely fantastic. Look at the colour of them. Wow. Now as these guys are cooling down, one of the local chefs from Warnable down at Proudfoot restaurant there gave me a little bit of a tip which I had not seen before. So we just trim these off and trim these off here. Here's, that opens a little hole there and they tend to have a lot of water in the heads when we cut them and it becomes quite messy. So what we do is we hang them over the top of the pot like so and as you see you'll get all the water from the heads all disappear into the pot and we'll let it cool down like that. Once the milk has come to the boil, I take it off the heat and leave it for 10 to 15 minutes for the flavours to infuse. Then I put the lobsters to the side and start on the roux, which helps thicken our bechamel. Now I've got 100 grams here of butter, so we're going to need 100 grams of flour. It's going to melt this, this is going to be our thickening agent. Once the butter has melted, I turn down the temperature, add in 100 grams of flour and mix it together until it becomes a thick paste. Then making sure the milk is still hot and the stunted onion is removed, I gradually incorporate the milk into the roux mixture bit by bit so the mixture doesn't get any lumps. Now we're going to need to cook this sauce out for at least 20 minutes and it has to be cooked on a very, very low temperature. Otherwise you end up with a very floury flavour. So I keep incorporating some more milk until I get a nice, smooth, velvety consistency for the sauce. To enhance the flavour a bit, I add in a little cream and some grated nutmeg. So we're going to cook that out now for 20 minutes, occasionally giving it a bit of a stir, but now it's time to prepare our lobster. I cut the lobster in half, going down the centre of the breastplate. I remove the stomach and intestinal tract, trying not to put any part of the lobster flesh in the fresh water because it loses its flavour. Next we go back to the sauce. So our Mornay sauce is ready to, uh, to make now. As you can see, our bechamel is all good, nice and smooth. While the bechamel is still hot, it's time to add our cheese. And we've got our lovely cheddar with our black pepper that's through there. And the residual heat will actually melt that. Now, next thing that we're going to add is Romano. Romano is a little bit more of it. It's a little bit more bite. Mmm, beautiful. A little bit more bite than what we've got in the pecorino there. They're all from the uh, palms and cheese family. And it's absolutely fantastic. Got a great flavour. I'm going to throw that in. It's a hard cheese, this one. Plenty of cheese goes in. I'm going to save a little bit for crusting the top. Now then, we've got our pecorino. This isn't matured for quite as long, so it's a little bit sweeter. We use, tend to use this a lot in my restaurant. Okay, this is going in there now. Not too much, but it is starting to really happen. Now I'm going to put a handful of parsley in here, fresh parsley. I then add a small amount of green peppercorn mustard that I picked up from the Warnable Cheese and Butter Factory and stir it through my sauce. Okay, Mornay sauce done. We're gonna move on to the lobster now. I carefully take the lobster meat out of the shell trying to keep it all in one piece. I then put a little bit of Mornay sauce in the shell, put the lobster up into bite-sized medallions and place it back in the shell on top of the sauce. Then I top the lobster with more sauce as well as some pecorino and parsley crumb. So there you have it, our lobster Mornay's done, ready to gratinate under the grill. Once the crumb is browned, I take the lobsters out from under the grill and plate them up for the locals to taste. 
There we go, guys. Got an absolutely beautiful lobster mornay there. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. We've had a great few days exploring the Warrnambool region. The locals have looked after us really well and I've been able to tick off driving on the Great Ocean Road from my bucket list. Hold on, just let me pull my pants. Panties up. Ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd go to the game. <laughs> Oh, I was a bit nervous there, let me tell you. Now he's got all of me. I want to get you on camera, is that okay? Do you mind? I want to get you tasting it. Now you've got to say it's good even if it's shit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> then you can tell me what you really think off camera. <laughs> <laughs>